This is Smart Build 1.22. This is a release that just came out uh, yesterday evening. So we have a lot of new features in here. I'm just going to go through these, um, mention them, show how to take care of some um, cleanup and some things that you need to do in order to take advantage of the features. So we're looking at my dashboard here. I'm going to go into a job that I've been working on. And like we saw last time, we're going to get an error right away as it opens up this job. So it's loading this job and it's getting all the framing rules and the information. And one of the things that comes up is invalid materials. Our framing rules have invalid materials. Please review your framing rules. Whenever you see this, again, just emphasizing it's a good idea to stop what you're doing and go back and actually look at your framing rules. And the reason we're getting that error right now is because we have some new uh, trim pieces and some new framing pieces that need to be specified what materials that you want to use in these cases. So I'm actually going to return to my dashboard. I'm going to go into my framing rules. And now when we get into the framing rules, we see some messages here, and these are the specifics of those framing rule errors. So these are some of the new things that we've added, and we need to tell the software which products, which materials we want to use in these cases. So you'll see here we have some new roof trim for transition pieces. So we have a gambrel type transition trim that you can set, and a western transition trim. And in addition, we've already had the valley type trim but now for these kind of transition pieces on the roof, we have the gambrel type, western type, type, and the valley type. In addition, we now have a gable and eave fascia material. So before, we just had one fascia, whether it was your sidewall or a front wall. And now you can set different fascia material for the gable and the eave. So that's another material that we'll need to add in. And we also now have rafters on the main building. So before on the main building, you could only do trusses. Now you can do rafters or trusses. And one of the things it wants is a product for the ridge board for that case. So to fix these, we just you can click on this fix button and it pulls up an interface. And so now we're looking at for the Gambrel transition trim, what do you want to use? And so this is a list of my trim that I have in my database. You may already have this uh, like the transition trim that you want to use. I added just a generic transition trim for the demo here. And you may have this already in your database or you may need to add that transition trim or any of these other parts. If you do have them already in your database, you can just simply double click on these. If you have more than one, you could come in and find additional and add them to this list. And when I hit save here, now for my Gambrel transition trim, I have that piece of trim available. If you, have, if you don't have the materials in your database yet, you'll have to go in and add those separately, and that is under the settings and the materials, and then you'll have to give pricing to those materials as well. And last week, we actually had a webinar on how to update um, and add new materials to your database. So you can go and look at that if you need to do that, or you can call our support line as well. So now I'm looking at this uh, Western transition trim. So I just have a general part that I put in here. So I'll hit save there. And for this roof trim, for the gable fascia material, I, let's see. I'll probably, I'll just put in eight inch and six inch and the three inch. So you, you can have multiple products in here. These will be options that you'll be able to select for this gable fascia material. Save that one. And the final one for the ridge board. I already had these products in here and I think we can kind of multi-select here you want also and you can hit this add button 
I'll do the same thing as double clicking on the material. And when we have these, you can come in and you can change the order of these if you want. These will change how they get ordered on the list when you can select what product you want to use. So now that I hit save, all these framing rule errors are no longer there. We fix those. Um, so if I go and look at some of these finishes, so here's our Gambrel transition trim that I added in, our Western transition trim. Uh, and we have our E fascia material versus our gable fascia. So for the gable fascia, I have this eight inch fascia as the default. And for the Eve, I have three inch. So you'd have to decide what, what kind of defaults you would want there. Um, so that's everything in the framing rules. So I want to make sure to hit save when you make any changes. Otherwise, you'll lose those changes. So now if we go back into this job, we shouldn't see this error. So now it's getting those additional framing rules, getting that additional information, adding that to the job, and no error. So that's good. So this is a demo that I had done before. And let me go to the frame here. And I have trusses for this main building. If we go to the framing tab and go to the roof, we have a roof framing style now that includes trusses and rafters. So I'm going to change this to rafters. And I'm going to lose this spacing and stuff that I had in here. So now we do have rafters on the roof. And as we look through this, it is looking for these settings down here to define what kind of products and spacing are used for the rafters. So we have a rafter material. I have two by four, but we could change that to two by six. We have this rafter spacing. And you can do the same kind of things you can do with trusses. Um, I could you know, change the spacing here. We could do two foot spacing. Um, you do rafter placement, whether you're starting from the left side of the building or starting from the right or centered, left, right, and you can come in and do custom spacing on it like trusses. Um, and we do have a ridge board that we put in and we'll match the two by six. So that's gonna be this member across here. We do have ridge board plies. If you need a two ply ridge board, then you can add that. You can have that as an option. And so as we're doing this, of course, on our material list, we're getting all the framing for our rafter pieces, which uh, and I guess did not split up this ridge board. Generally, these the rafters are not going to be used on a building this large, I would think. So I have a 50 foot long ridge board that I do not have in my database. Um, so where are the rest of my rafters in here? Are those in here? And I'm just not saying, OK, there they are. So there's a 54. 20 foot long rafters. So this is maybe not the best demonstration for the actual rafters, just because this is a, a big roof. I probably wouldn't use rafters on, but just to demonstrate, that's how you can get rafters for your main building. Um, might change this back to trusses. And those of course will come through on your material lists and get priced according to what you have in your database. The other Framing rule fix we did was this um, gable versus the eave fascia trim. So if we go and look at that here in the job, if we go to the roof trim, here's our different fascia materials. And so you can set these to be different. It looks like we do. I have this three inch, which doesn't quite cover my truss tails here. And I have this big eight inch piece here. Of course, we could change this if you wanted to.
So that updated that one to the six inch. And so now I have a six inch or eight inch. And of course you could have these be the same if you wanted to, but now you do have the option to have these be a uh, different material. Now the other piece that we looked at that I'll just demonstrate is the transition pieces. So right now, we should have a standard gable. But if we do our standard gambrel, it's kind of a large roof, but if we go and look at our materials, go to the trim, we will see this gambrel transition trim. And this is red, and the reason that's red, and actually I think if we look at this message here, uh, well, actually these messages in here, this product, so if I click on those messages, it'll take me here. One or more products not available in the selected color. So for this gambrel transition trim, I actually did not um, get all my colors for this gambrel transition trim. So it's not finding this charcoal color available for this gambrel transition. That's just because I didn't set that up in my database. But it's a good thing to point out if you do have pieces that it can't find either for color or in the framing case, like we saw before, if the lengths are too long and they um, aren't in your material database, it will give you this uh, message and the price will be read and this product will be read on the material list. But we do have a gambrel transition. If we go to the advanced mode, we could set this up as the Western style. You can change the slopes and the curb if you need to. You can adjust these. Gives you a little preview. If you hit apply, then it'll apply that Western style roof. And we do have this Western transition trim. Now you could have multiple types of Western transition trim here. And you might need to change those up depending on what you're going to use for a given roof. And if that's the case, you would need to have those um, different pieces of trim available for these different types of conditions. And you could switch those um, just like you can do for other types of products. I just have a single, like for these, you could switch. You could have multiple Western and Gambrel transition trims that you could switch to depending on the situation. And these will also come into play when you have a situation with a transition um, on a lean-to from your main roof. So if I put this main building back to a gable, and actually maybe what I'll do is add an additional building to, uh, an additional lean to, to this existing additional building. So in this case, if I do like an open porch, so I'm gonna open this porch up, use this shed style roof, and we'll see what roof pitch, I think this is probably 412 as well. Um, and maybe I'll use trusses for this. Could change up the spacing and the heel height. And I'm going to start this at zero. And I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'll just have this be a 10 foot length. And the width is not important. For this, I'm going to use the offset down. I'm just going to offset down from the eave height. And I think I have one foot overhang here. I'll try to match that. So now if I add this to this wall here, so I had a little open porch and now there's no transition here because these are the same roof pitch. So this is just one roof panel essentially. 
But if I edit this attached building, click edit and then click on this lean to, if I change this roof pitch to a different, like if we increase the pitch, which let's see actually what happens here. It's thinking. And so it did add in a piece of trim there. Let's see what we got. So that gave us the gambrel transition there with increased pitch. If we put this to, so if we go back and edit this again and do something like 212, which probably makes more sense. And as it's thinking about it, and this one got a little bit weird because of the, the overhang that I have here, but it did add a piece of transition trim there as well, and this time it's the Western transition. So depending on which way the pitch is going, you'll get that gambrel versus the Western trim. And so for the gambrel, obviously you'll get those gambrel transition trims and the Western, you get the Western. And then on these um, offset down, we call them porches that are at the same height as the eave, you'll either, you'll get the Western or the gambrel depending on which way the pitch is going. So that's a new ridge kind of pitch breaks that are different than the valleys. We still do have the valley. If we add in an additional building here, which had the overframing, we had some roof here, you would also get the valley uh, transition type trim. So another new feature that we have is the ability to specify some different types of trusses. And this does not affect a 3D model at this point, which will come in the future, but you can select either a flat bottom cord, a scissor, or an attic type truss. We're calling this truss special right now. And so you have the option to select one of these different types of bottom cords. Eventually we'll add some additional choices here, we'll get those into the 3D model and we'll integrate these more into the truss itself. Right now, um, what we can do is select from the truss special and you can do this through the main building. So if I change this to scissor, all of these trusses on the main building are going to be flagged as a scissor truss. We could also come into this attached building and do the same thing. So you could have flat for your main building and then for your attached building, you could have scissor trusses or, or vice versa. It might make more sense. Maybe the main building is a scissor truss uh, for more headroom and then maybe you have an office coming off that would be flat trusses. So now that we've selected um, scissor truss for the main building, if we go and look here, I actually do not have scissor trusses in my database at this point. So it's having a hard time finding any of these trusses. Some of them, it doesn't find them at all. Some of them have found some close matches. So the orange indicates is a close match. If it's red and says not found, that means it couldn't find anything in my trust catalog that it could match up. So I wanna show you how you can add these types of trusses into your database. So what it'll do now is if you do have a scissor truss in your catalog, it'll find that truss and have the truss special as scissor and you can have a different tr price for a scissor truss versus a flat truss versus an attic truss. And so I'm actually gonna leave the job here. Maybe I'll, I'll save it. Just for any of those changes that we made. And once this saves, I'm just gonna return to the home screen and I'm gonna go into the settings and go into trusses. And so I have an existing set of trusses in my catalog. I do not have 
any scissor trusses. So they're going to come in as flat. So here's this this flag here. And let me switch this up a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. So this is the special field. I have all of these as flat, and they'll come in as flat if there's nothing specified. In order to get some scissor trusses or some attic trusses, the best way to do this is you can download this material list. And so I downloaded that to my machine. I'm going to open this up. And I'm using Google Chrome, so I have to do a couple things here to get this into a state where I can actually edit this Excel file. So now I have this in Excel, pretty much. And these are all the different columns that we have available. And still doing a little bit of thinking. And we'll notice at the end here, we do have this new column of special. And all of these are flat. If you have some trusses already that you've designated as scissor, maybe through your description, and you had a different price, and you were just manually using those, you could just change any of these to scissor. But what's more likely is that you don't really have your scissor attic trusses in your trust catalog at this point. So what you can do is download this file, and you can copy some of these rows. So for example, I could just take these 20 foot spans, I have some various pitches and some different heels. And let's just, if I wanted to have these same trusses available in the scissor truss, I could come down to the bottom of the list. And if I paste these, so I copied those and pasted them. So now I have these down at the bottom of the list. These are now exactly the same trusses and that's actually, when you try to upload this, it's not gonna work because it's gonna say you already have this exact same truss. And even if I come in here and change these to, let's say these are all my scissor trusses, and so that I could change all these to scissor truss here. So now these all have, oh, that's the wrong column here. Let me change that. So now those are all have that trust special flag for scissor, but I still have the same SKUs. And what did I do here? Oh, I pasted that into the wrong location. Okay. Sorry. I missed my first column here, as you can see. So now if I go back here and paste that in the correct location, Mm, okay. I lost my clipboard apparently. Let me try this one more time. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to make sure I'm at the, the right column. Paste these. So now I have all these in here. Now, if I come here, this is making more sense. Scissor. I can make all these scissor. So now I have the flag is scissor, but you do also have to change your skew. So this column here is the skew. If it sees this exact skew right now, this is the exact same skew. So for all of these scissor trusses, I need to adjust the skew so that it has some type of indication. And I believe the program will automatically I think it puts in an SC at the end. So for each one of these, I would need to go in and adjust the SKU. And you may have a different type of SKU that you use. You don't have to use the SKU that Smart Build produces. We produce a SKU that pretty much just spelled out, spells out all the different parameters. Uh, but you can use your own SKU and your own description if you like. But if you do this copy method, you will have to adjust all of these SKUs. Otherwise, the program is going to see that you have the exact same SKUs, and it's going to say, sorry, we, we can't upload those. So now that I've updated all these, I can download this as a CSV file. 
And so if I download this here, I now have this in my downloads folder. If I come back to my system, the best way to do this is to delete all of these. So you might want to keep a backup copy. is always a good idea of your initial download. I just made those changes, so I'm pretty confident that I didn't do anything to my existing trusses. I'm going to delete all these and upload. I'm going to go and choose the CSV file that I just saved and hit upload. Mm, and it did. I did not change my description, um, so that wasn't happy with me. But this does demonstrate that when you're doing this process and you have errors, it's going to let you know what's going on, and you can go back and fix it. So the situation here is I did change my SKU, but it also wants me to change my description to include something that uh, makes it different. So I, I'm not going to go and do that at this point. If I did go and change that description and uploaded this back into the program, it would update all of my trusses. But this will give you feedback and give you some errors. So if you do make a backup copy and then you can go and work on the new CSV file and you can upload it, if there's issues, it's going to let you know. So I'm getting a message from Paul, showing your ad trust on the materials page. Okay. So I could have gotten these loaded up for now. I'm not going to go and do that right now. But we could have updated our trusses. You can update your trusses this way if you change your SKU and your description and change your flag to scissor or to attic or both. You can use your existing trusses, make copies of them, make these adjustments, and then you can upload this back into the system and then you're Trusses will be updated with scissor and act trusses. And if you do that, then we could go into the job and you could select the scissor truss for the main building and it will pick up the price and the cost for those scissor trusses. So that'd be another piece that you could edit in that CSV file is the cost and the price for the scissor and the attic trusses. Hey, Sean. Yeah. What I was asking was just click on that uh, the info button on the price, and it'll take you to your trusses. Mm -hmm. So this this way, I find much easier to add stuff to the trust table. You just click on the not found. Gives you the the SKU. You can copy and paste that description up into the SKU or you can change the SKU to match your normal, um, your normal uh, paradigm for, for naming your trusses. But it automatically yeah. comes in, you, you copy and paste the description up to the SKU, it creates the new SKU, you put in a cost and price and add to trust table, and now that trust is added to your trust table forever. You can download that, that CSV and make other changes to it, but I definitely find that this is the quickest way to add trusses to that trust table. You change them right here, and on each job that you you don't have a truss on for, it just automatically gets added, and you don't have to worry about it again. It's added to your trust table. Yeah, yep, that's a good point. This is an, another way that you can add trusses to your trust catalog. It's much easier, I find. Yep. So. Yeah, like Paul said, the program will build this description, and that's based off of all these parameters. As you can see, the common trust, the span is 20, and the pitch. And so it builds that description, and you can copy that and paste it into the SKU if you want to use the same SKU for, as the description, or you could change the SKU to whatever you want, like Paul said. And you can add in the cost here, and we could do a price here as well. And once you do that and you hit add to trust table, it will add it to that trust table we were working at, looking at and working on before. So yeah, this is a good point, Paul. This is another way that you can add trusses into your trust catalog. Um, and, now, and now, just what happened 
is the gable truss is a flat truss. It just comes in as a flat gable. And we've called this, um, this truss a scissor. I'm pretty sure that this is the one that, if you open, expand out the skew. Well, the skew. The skew. So, yeah. so it's seen that the gable is the closest match. So now you go down to that orange truss, mm -hmm. like that eye. And if you see the description there, it should, oh, this must be a flat. Yeah, it's still, the, the special is null. So this is still one, a flat truss. So you can kick, click that, copy and paste it up to the SKU, just so it's finding that truss. You, it's only looking for the gable because that's the close to match. Now you click add to truss table. We could change. So let, let's change find, right. yeah, let's find one of those that you put in there that was a, a special. Oh, why'd you cancel it? Well, th I was getting into one that actually was a special. This must be the truss from my attached building. It's the gable. Yeah, okay. So here is a non-gable truss with the scissor flag. And so this one wasn't found at all, but now we could go in. And so I did put this SC at the end of the description, could copy this and paste this and put in whatever price we want and add that to the truss table. So now we would have a scissor truss. So now that this turned black, it's recognized and found this truss because I just added to the truss table. So in real time, it did add that to the truss table. So now I do have one scissor truss in my truss table since I deleted all of my trusses out of my truss table and didn't end up fixing all those. But now if we went back to the truss table, we would see that we have this scissor truss. So yeah, good point, Paul. You can also add it this way. So you could come in and just actually change these settings we could change this to attic, and this is going to kind of throw it back into a state where it's not finding some of these. So now it's not finding that one. We get the AT at the end of the SKU, and we could go in and do that same process now where we could copy this one, paste it up here. We could change the price, whatever we want it to be, add to the truss table. And now we have one attic truss and one scissor truss in our, in our truss catalog. So yeah, good point, Paul. That's another way that you could add that. To, to me, I find that this way is the quickest way. And whenever you go to the description, you don't have to use our description. You could type in whatever description paradigm you're used to using and mm -hmm. then copy and paste that up into your SKU, which probably should be the same, um, but I don't know what all the other companies use for SKUs compared to descriptions. But yeah. that's, to me, this is the quickest way. and if you want to just fill out your trust table and know that you have all 20 footers and 22 footers and 24 footers in there, you, you can just create buildings. Just create those buildings right here, change the building parameters and go into this truss, do this process, click, click, click. And then that's adding those trusses to your trust table without having to try to type up different descriptions on that CSV which some people are, are used to using the CSV, some people are good at Excel, and some people would just rather see it right here on the screen. They don't have to go into, um, go into a download, change that, upload, and, and possibly get those errors. So this is pretty much the error-free way of, of adding the trusses. Yep, yep, good point. Okay, I'm gonna move on to some other couple other items. Um, something that we've done in this release is to add some additional kind of safeguards for jobs. So we did add in errors where you could define errors. I have one that if my post spacing is over 14, then I get this warning message that lets me know there's spacing greater than 14 in the contact support for potentially getting some engineering review. Um, so the thing that we've done in this release is if you try to, and I shall save this job, if you try to make a job quoted, 
if you do not have like an override, it's not going to let you quote a job until you fix these errors or you get an override. So if I try to make this job a quote, and we did have that one error we just looked at um, with the post spacing over 14 feet, if I try to make this a quote, there's two options here. One, you could have a user, and this is by individual user in the system. You can have some users who are not able to make this a quote if there's these kind of errors. And that would mean they would have to either fix those errors before they can make it a quote or would have to go and talk to someone who's able to do an override. So the way I'm set up right now is I'm able to make this a quote even with errors, but you do still get this kind of a confirmation warning message box. So I have these errors. It's letting me know that when I make this a quote, it's gonna lock the framing and the pricing. And it's gonna change the status of the quote. And then it's showing me the errors. I had those, um, a couple trim products that I didn't have colors for. Um, there's some trusses that we didn't totally match up in the truss table. And also we have this post spacing issue. And so in this case, I can say yes if I want to because I have a flag that allows me to make this a quote even with the errors. Or we could have this, it just doesn't let you. And if you want to make this a quote, you're going to have to figure out how to deal with these errors before you can make it a quote. And that's an option that you would have. Um, and in your system, we can set you up to either allow people to go make things quotes even with errors They'll get this message, they'll understand you know, what the messages are, but they could still make it a quote, or we can totally lock it down. And right now the default is it's locked down, so you can't make this a quote if you don't have errors, unless you have an override. If you wanna change that on your existing system, um, just let us know, and we can easily change that for you. Right now that's something that we'll have to do for you. In the future, there'll probably be more controls for your system, but, Right now it's going to be locked down. It's not going to be able to be a quote if you have errors. If you want to unlock that and have this type of situation where you get the errors, but you can say yes here, then just let us know and we can change that on your system. The other thing that we did along these lines is to allow you to make certain job info fields required. So here's those framing rule checks that I had set up. And now for this job tab, you can customize this job tab. So these can be whatever fields you want, whatever names you want, however many of these you want, in different types, dates and stuff that you can put in here. This is customizable. And now you can also make certain fields required. We automatically make a project name required. You can't just leave a project name blank but all of these other ones you don't have to fill out. But if you want them to be filled out, we have this new R button. And so if I click the R, now this company name has this asterisk and that means this is a required field. And so if I save this, and if we go back into our job now, an additional message that we're going to get, if I don't fill out that field, is you can't save this until you fill out this field. So I actually do have this filled out, but quickly, hopefully for demonstration purposes, I can make that change. And as soon as I make that change, and it's running a little bit slow with the go-to meeting, I think. So now that we made that change, I can save. So if I try to hit save here, it's gonna say, nope, this is required. It's not gonna let you save until we do something here. Now that I hit save, it's going to actually save that job. So if you wanna make sure that you're getting all the information that you need, or if you even have questions that you can ask here, like did you review your error messages? There's several different ways you could use that. You can lock these different fields down, certain fields, whatever fields you want. The one things you can't, we do have check boxes in here and those you cannot lock down. But you could have a yes, no type question if you wanted to. A um, Couple other quick things to point out. We 
we do have these uh, max lengths for both the girts and the purlins. So you can set a max length and you can say, I do not want any of my purlins to be over 18 foot, even though you may have 20 foot part lengths in your database. For purlins, I don't want to use those. Um, I just want to use 18. And we've had this before, but something that we did when we had consolidation of smaller cuts, if we had some smaller purlins, um, you know, like eight foot lengths or something, we would try to combine those into longer lengths and we would use lengths longer than your max length. So we would combine smaller cuts in the 20 foot piece potentially. We're not doing that anymore. So now for purlins, if I set this as the max length, I should not get any purlins that are over 18 foot length, even when consolidating prices or consolidating the cut lengths. Um, some of you noticed this, and just so everyone's aware, in some cases we had symmetrical gable walls and the sheathing, we're getting different lengths on like this initial piece and this end piece, even though we had it centered, um, or using the peak to lay these out, we'd maybe get an inch longer over here than on this side. Some of you saw that, we fixed that, so now these should be um, symmetrical. So you get the same length over here, some more consolidation of those pieces. Um, one other thing we did add is a token for quoted date. So when you make something a quote, you'll get a quoted date. And we now have a token that you can use in the document outputs. So you can use that token as a quoted date on your like sales contract. And so whatever the quoted date for this particular job is, that'll come through in your document template. A um, couple other things I just wanted to point out that we did as well. We improved um, in working with the supplier and builder relationship where you have a supplier providing the materials and a builder who's using that supplier's materials and using the system in 3D and can get um, you know material lists based on the supplier's cost and materials. We have now improved that to where anytime a supplier like deletes or adds something from their uh, material database, it'll automatically update a builder's material database. And that's something we weren't doing before. Um, the one other thing that we've done is before we just had trim pieces could only be by part length. You couldn't do like a random length piece of trim to where, you know, we were not picking out a part length for the trim, but it's giving you the lengths based off of what's actually required. Like maybe if you're rolling your own trim potentially and you don't want to get the part lengths, you're not pulling them off a shelf. We can now do trim both by part lengths that you pick off the shelf or what we call random length or just the lengths that are actually required. And similar, and actually just kind of reversed, for the sheathing, we did random length for the sheathing. So we're getting these cut lengths based off of what's required in this model. And that's the random length. We did not have part lengths for sheathing. Like if you do have sheathing that you're pulling off the shelf and you have specific part lengths, we weren't supporting that, but now we are. So now you can have sheathing or trim be either by the part length if you're pulling it off the shelf, or you can have it by the random length, which will give you the actual cuts based on the job itself. If you do want to do that, uh, we can help you get that set up. So if that's something that you've wanted to do and you weren't able to do, let us know. We can help you get that set up. So I think that's everything that I wanted to cover for the new stuff. If you have additional questions, feel free to call our support line. Um, yeah, real, yeah, so, um, you know, each, uh, every other week, you know, we try to uh, pick a topic for a webinar. So if there's a, an area, guys, where, um, you know, you feel that, you know, we ha you haven't become educated enough or maybe our documentation comes up short, just let us know. I mean, any, any time during the week for that matter, you know, you can, uh, you can make suggestions. And um, we'll try to tailor it to what people want to see. No, other than that, I think we're just going to kind of steady Eddie. We're going to keep on uh, 
keep on chipping away. So uh, as always, we appreciate your input, you know, suggestions that drives our software development. So keep the cards and letters coming. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for coming. Okay, see you next week, hopefully. Bye. Bye-bye.